So today we shall consider about trees and search trees. A tree is a digraph with a non-empty set of nodes such that there is a exactly one node called the root of the tree which has degree 0. Every node other than the root has in degree 1. For every node A of the tree there is a directed path from the root to A. So a tree has a structure something like this. There is a root which has got in degree 0 and you may have other nodes like this. This is a tree. These are called leaves. The other nodes are called internal nodes. For every node, there is a directed path from the root to the tree. The following are not trees. Consider this. If you have something like this, this is not a tree because you are having two nodes with in degree 0. So, that is not a tree. And look at this. This is also not a tree because you have a root no doubt, but this node has in degree 2 and so this is not a tree. And similarly, if you take something like this directed in this manner, this is not a tree because there is no node with in degree 0, there is no root at all in this. So, this is not a tree. So, a tree has something it has a structure something like this and you may have more and more uh, levels, you may have something. Now, th for this node, these are the suns. Say if I label them as A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, C, then for C, F, G, H are the suns and for i h is the father for d and e b is the father and so on a has two sons b and c c has three sons and so on now a is an ancestor of i ancestor of i it in the path it comes before i from the root c is also an ancestor i is called a descendant descendant and look at this portion this is called the subtree and the subtree has root at c similarly you have a if you take this this is a subtree and this subtree has a root at b so, these are some of the terminologies associated with the tree and generally when you draw a tree, you do not draw the arcs, you just draw a tree like this. Just draw like this. It is supposed to be directed in this way and this is the root. Now, what is the height of this tree? The height of the tree is the 
length of the longest path, length of the longest path from the root, longest path to a leaf from from the root. This is called the height of the tree. So, look at this, the height of this tree is 3, the height of this. Now, the root is supposed to be at level 0, these 3 nodes are at level 1, this is these 3 nodes are at level 2, these 2 are at level 3, the height is 3. So, these are some terminologies associated. the tree. Now, let us consider this, let T be a tree with root R and A be any node of the tree, then there is a unique directed path from R to A. You have a tree T, something like this, then by definition there is a path a is any node, there is a path to A from the root, but we want to show that that is unique, there is a unique path. How do we prove that? That there is a path from directed path from root to A is clear, by definition it is there and it, it is also a simple path, you can very easily see that it is a simple path, but that path is unique. How do we prove that? You can prove by induction, proof by induction. You have a tree say, some tree like this, it is only a small tree I have drawn, but generally any tree and let S n denote the set of nodes such that such that if a belongs to s n then the length of the path from root to a the length of the path from root to A is less than or equal to N. Now, the basis class you can prove like this, A 0 means it is only the root, for the root there is only a one path of length 0 from itself to itself, so that that is unique. If you take S 1, it denotes nodes which are sons of the root and you can very easily see that there will be only one directed path, yeah, the path is unique to them. So, that is ok. Now, induction portion assume that the result is true up to s n minus 1 that is up to s, s n minus 1 that is if the node is such that the length of the path from the root to that node is less than or equal to n minus 1 then there is a unique directed path from the root to that node. Then proof for n you have to prove for n. So, suppose a belongs to s n there are two possibilities, one is A belongs to S n minus 1, that is the length of the path from the root to A is less than or equal to n minus 1. Then by the induction hypothesis, the result holds.
The other thing is A does not belong to S n minus 1. That means, the path from the root to A is of length n. From root, the path to A is of length n, of length n. That means, there is a path like this root to some node and then to this node. this is A, some node B, this path is of length n minus 1 and from T B to A you have a path. Suppose, this path is not unique, there can be another path say, if there is another path, then the integrity of this will be 2, but you can have only integrity 1 for this node A. So, from this will have only integrity 1 means there is only one arc like this entering into A and this node B will belong to S n minus 1 that is the length of the path from the root to this node is of length n minus 1 and this path is unique. So, this path is unique. So, like that you can prove and, and the by induction hypothesis the result is proved. Now, arithmetic expressions you can express as uh, trees. Let us consider some arithmetic expression and see how they can be represented as trees. Look at this tree where the internal nodes represent operators plus star, star, some 4, 5. minus 6 2 plus 7 5. What does this tree represent? This tree represents an arithmetic expression and you can write it like this. Four star five star 6 minus 2 that is this portion and it should be added to 7 plus 5. This arithmetic expression is represented as a tree like this. Now, how do you evaluate this? Level by level you can evaluate. So, if you try to evaluate this, 4 star 5 is 20. So, this will be plus star plus and here the evaluation gives you 20 and here 6 minus 2 gives you 4 and plus 7 5 you have. So, this gives you this evaluates to 20 into 4 80 and 7 plus 5 is 12. Now, this evaluates to 80 plus 12 92. So, the arithmetic expression evaluates to 92. This is the way in the compiler a compiler is a large program which translates a machine language in which translates a source language a high level language into a machine code. And there are two parts of the compiler one is the analysis part and another is the synthesis part. In the analysis part the source program is analyzed and kept inside the computer as a in the internal form. The internal form could be a triple or a quadruple or a tree or a postfix notation, some prefix notation and something like that. Let us see what is postfix notation, prefix notation a little bit later. Now, when it is represented inside the computer like this <coughs> in the internal form and then the code is generated, but essentially the evaluation is done in this manner and for that the code proper code is generated. 
you will learn more about it as a compiler design, design theory course. But the main point to note is that the arithmetic expression is represented, can be represented as a tree like this and, and the internal nodes are operators, leaves are numbers or variables whatever it is. It could be something like A, B and then A can be given a particular value, B can be given a particular value and so on. Now, you will real see these points very clearly. Every directed path in a tree is a simple path because there are no node will be repeated. There are no loops on the nodes, there are no self loops the nodes and a tree has no directed simple cycles of non-zero length. So, if you have a tree like this and usually we do not write the direction of the arcs explicitly, but without them we write, but suppose you also draw the arcs. Look at this, every path is a simple path and there are no self loops, there is no directed cycle and the other thing is every the only cycle undirected simple cycles of non-zero length are of length 2. That is between these two suppose you have some arc like this A B, you can look at it as a undirected cycle A B A, you can look at it as an undirected cycle A B A that is what is said by this that this is not a major uh, point. The point is there are no cycles here, there are no self loops and every path is a simple path. Now, when you look at a tree like this, this has two suns, this also has two suns, this has three suns, this has three suns, this is a ternary tree. A ternary tree will have three, each node will have three suns two suns, one sun or zero. It will not have more than, no node will have more than three suns. When you look at a binary tree, this is a binary tree, this is a binary tree, each node will have two suns, one sun or zero suns. The leaves have zero suns, this node has got one sun, this has got two suns, this has got two suns and so on no node will have more than two suns that is called the binary tree. In general nary tree means each node will have n suns or less. Now, what is a complete nary tree? nary tree means each node will have I suns, I can vary from 0 to n. A complete nary tree a complete nary tree means each node has 0 or n suns. So, if you take the root, it will have say it can have n suns and if you take any other node, it can have n suns, otherwise it will be a leaf. This is called a complete nary tree, okay. What is a complete binary tree? Complete binary tree. Each node has zero or 
two sons. For example, look at this, this is a complete binary tree. Look at this tree, this is also a complete binary tree. Look at this, this is not a complete binary tree because this node has only one son. So, this is not a complete binary tree, it is a binary tree but not a complete binary tree. So, binary trees are very much used for search purposes, ternary trees are also used. Let us see how we can use binary trees as search trees. Before that, what can you say about the height of a binary tree? So, some results about the height of the binary tree. If T is a binary tree of height h and with n nodes, then n is between h plus 1 and 2 power h plus 1 minus 1. Moreover, there exist binary trees in which these bounds are attained. How do you prove that? You have a binary tree, say let me draw binary tree. This is a binary tree, say. How many nodes are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 nodes are there. What is the height of this tree? 3, n is 8, h is 3 here <coughs> in this example. Now, in general, n is between h plus 1 and 2 power h plus 1 minus 1. In the worst, let us consider the worst case scenario, you can have a binary tree like this. A binary tree will have, if it has two sons like this, a node has two sons, this is called the left son, this is called the right son. So, you can have a tree like this where there are no right sons at all. Then what is the number of nodes here? n is 4 here and h is 3. So, n will the worst case n, n can be h plus 1, this is the one. The other way around every node has got two sons x, so at every level. So, you may have a tree like this, a binary tree. Sometimes this is called, this is a complete binary tree, but uh, this is a this is a complete binary tree with height h 3. Uh, this is also a complete, please remember that this is also a complete binary tree. To distinguish between complete binary trees like this and this, sometimes this is called a called a full binary tree, but that is not a very common terminology. Some books use that notation. So, what is the number of uh, nodes here? The number of nodes is 15, n is 15 and h is 3. So, what is 2 power h plus 1? 2 power h plus 1 is 15, uh, 16 and 2 power h plus 1 minus 1 is 15. So, in this case you get the maximum number of nodes with the for this height. For height 3, the minimum number of nodes you can get is 4, the maximum number of nodes you can get is 2 power h plus 1 minus 1, 15 you can have. You can also get like this, if the height is h at level 0 you have 1 node, at level uh, level 1 you have 2, at level 2 you have 2 squared nodes, at level 3 you have 2 cubed and so on. So, in general if the height is h, if the height, I will write it here, if the height is h, you will have. So, maximum node you can have is like this, it is a geometric uh, series sum and it will sum up to 2 power h plus 1 minus 1.
So, we have this result and the next one is a binary tree with no n nodes, the height is at least log n that you can very easily see. If say for uh, 7 nodes you can have uh, height 2 tree, for 8 nodes the minimum will be 3, for 9 nodes the minimum has to be 3, for 15 nodes you can have a tree with height h, for 16 nodes you will have minimum height is required is 4. If you have 16 nodes there should be something like that at one position the height will become 4. So, we can very easily see that if there are n nodes the minimum height of the tree will be log n taking the floor function. Now, all these things we have uh, seen, but how do you formally define a binary tree? How do you def formally define a binary tree? Formal definition. You can, we have seen that sets can be defined inductively. So, we can use an inductive definition to define a binary tree. So, the basis part will be the root node alone like this a single node, single node is a binary tree. Now, the induction class you write like this T 1 and T 2 are binary trees already constructed with roots R 1 and R 2 respectively. Then have a new node R, take a new node R then R with an arc to R 1 along with T 1, this is a binary tree, then R with a right arc to R 2 and the tree T 2, this is a binary tree and R along with an arc to R 1 and an arc to R 2 with the tree T 1 and with the tree T 2, this is also a binary tree. So, the basis class is you take a single node that is a binary tree with no arcs and if you have two binary induction classes depend like this, if you have two binary trees T 1 and T 2 with roots R 1 and R 2 respectively, take a new node R then R along with an edge like this and T 1 is a binary tree, R along with an edge like this to R 2 and T 2 is a binary tree, R with an edge to directed edge from R to R 1 and R to R 2 along with trees T 1 and T 2 like this is a binary tree. Of course, when you define a set inductively you have to also use what is known as the extremal class. So, here we have to mention the extremal class. Earlier we have seen that the extremal class is the same for all that is all binary trees can be obtained in this manner and nothing else will be obtained. So, this is the formal way of defining a binary tree. Now, these binary trees or ternary trees they are very useful in database and they are used as search trees. Data is stored as a record, a record will have several fields. For example, you have a record say, it will have several fields for example, employee in a company you want to store the records of all the employees. It will have employee number, name, department whatever it is something like that. 
if you take US and all, you may also have social security number, name and so on. Now, when you want to search for some record, it is better if it is the records are stored in the form of a tree, so that the search takes less amount of time. If you have it as a linear record, one by one you have to search and it will take lot of time. Here we have seen that you can, when you have n nodes, the height can be log n. So, you can very easy, in log n time you can search, whereas if you store it as linear record, you will require search time n. Now, when you want to search, you have to search through a key what is known as a key. The key should be unique, unique for each record. For example, if it is a department number or something, there may be so many employees in a department, so that cannot serve as a key. Whereas, if you take the social security number of a person in, uh, that is applicable in US, that is unique and in a company or in IA, even even IAT, if you take each person has an employee number, employee identity that is unique, no two person will have the same employee number. So, you can store according to that uh, employee number which is serves as the key and you sort, you store the records and you have to search through the key and you may use ternary trees or binary trees, first let me see how you can store records using binary trees. For simplicity, let us consider only some integers, how we can, uh, let us take only integers. There are two ways of storing the records. For the, for as an example, you have this. number say 7, 5, 3, 10, 8. Each record is stored in a node of the tree. This is the tree and each record is stored in a node, internal node or leaf. So, if I want to search whether 9 is present, how will I go about searching? First, you go to the root, all elements less than 7 will be in the left subtree, all element greater than 7 will be in the right subtree. So, suppose I want to search for 9, I go to the root, I find that 7 is less than 9. So, the next search I have to do in the right subtree. So, you go here and here when I see 9, 9 is less than 10. So, here I have to go to the left subtree and here I find 8, 9 is not there. So, that record is not found. Now, you can add that 9 here, 8 is stored here. So, if you want to add 9, you have to add like this, 9 is greater than 8. So, it has to go to the right subtree of this. But then the, uh, there will be some balancing also done. See, I, next one if you add, suppose I want to add 14, I will add like this, then 16 I have to add like this. The height of the tree will keep on increasing. So, there is some balancing also will be done that will be explained in the data structures uh, course. You, you will learn about that in the data structures course. The main idea is tree as a structure how it is used. So, you can store the record in each of the nodes and you can search like this. Each node will contain the key value and if you are going to search for a value which is less than that, you have to go to the left subtree. All the nodes on the left sub subtree will have values less than that and all the nodes on the right subtree will have values greater than that. This is the way uh, datas are stored. Another way of storing is 
you store the records only at the leaves and in the internal nodes you store discriminating values they are called discriminators discriminators the records are stored only at the root let us see how this is done take this the leaves stored the values the same values we can take <coughs> 3 5 7 the values are stored like this <coughs> the root <coughs> will contain a discriminator it could be something like 8 now all values greater than or equal to 8 will be stored on the right subtree they are stored at the leaves all values greater than or equal to 8 are stored in the right subtree now in this node you must have a discriminator which tells you what are the things which should go to this something like say you can have 12 here all values greater than or equal to 12 will go to this and here you can have something like 13. So, the value 12 is on this side if the value is 13 or more it will be on the right subtree and here you can have a value like say some 10 this is a discriminator all values less than 10 will be going to the left subtree greater than or equal to will go to the right subtree there is no right subtree here if you have a like record say 11 it will go here 10 or 11 it will go here and similarly in this tree the left this value is 3 4 3 5 so you can have a discriminator 4 here all values greater than or equal to 4 will go to the right subtree all values less than 4 go to the left subtree and here you can have something like 6. So, all values less than 6 go to this subtree, all values greater than or equal to 6 go to the right subtree. But in this case, the values are stored only at the leaves and the internal nodes contain the discriminators. This is one way of doing. Uh, so, there are two ways of storing the records, and we have seen how to do that with binary trees. Let us consider ternary trees where the values are stored at the internal uh, not at the internal nodes, but only at the leaves. These ternary trees are also frequently used. Each node can have two or three sons. So, here we can have three, it can have two sons or three sons. Now, again this can have say this has three sons and this has two sons, this you can take as a leaf say for example. And this may have leaves. like this, this may have say 3 sons like this, this has got 1 son and 2 sons, 
some records you store here, let us see how they are stored. Two, four, seven, ten, twelve, fifteen, twenty, twenty-one, and here twenty five thirty thirty two thirty seven something like that say. Now when you have three sons, this node will have two discriminators. The first one here in this case it can be something like twenty one, all values which are equal to twenty one and the next value x a less than x will go to the middle subtree. Here from 25 we can we are having, so I can have something like 23. So, all values which are less than 21 will go to the left subtree, which are equal to 21 and greater than 21, but less than 23 will go here which are greater than or equal to 23 will go to the right subtree, the third tree. And if a node has just two sons as in this case, there will be only one discriminator here. So, the least is 31 and get 32 and 37 you have. So, one value can be 31, all values less than 31 will go here, all values greater than or equal to 31 will go to the subtree. Now, here you are having 25 and uh, 30, uh, maybe I should draw it in a slightly different way, so that the left and the right are clearly seen. So, here I should have a value such that it should be mo more than 25 and less than or equal to 30, something like 27 I can have. So, that the lesser value go to the left subtree and the right greater than or equal to value goes to the right subtree. Here also we can have there are only two sons, so I can have a value say something like 35 here. So, that values less than 35 go here to the left subtree, values greater than or equal to 35 go to the right subtree. Now, this has got uh, three sons, so there should be two discriminating values here. And the values, the middle subtree contains 7 and 10. So, I can have something like 6 here. So, all values greater than or equal to 6, but less than say 12 go to this subtree. And all values greater than or equal to 12 go to the right subtree. Now, look at this, this again has got three sons. So, here the, there should be two discriminating values. I can have something like 14 and 17. All values less than 14 will go to the first tree. All values greater than or equal to 14, but less than 17 will go to the middle subtree. Greater than or equal to 17 will go to the right subtree. So, the discriminating values we have to choose something like this. Here there are only two sons, so I can choose a discriminating value like this and here there are only two sons, I can choose a discriminating value like this. So, the internal nodes only contain the discriminating values, if it has got three sons, it will have two discriminating values and if it has got two sons, it will have only one discriminating value. So, these ternary trees sometimes they are called a two three trees and uh, this type of a tree is called a uh, two three tree, each node can have two or three sons and it is somewhat uh, uh, this is not balanced, but all the leaves in some cases you expect all the leaves to be at the same level, in that case it is called a balanced tree. So, in general you would like to have balanced uh, trees and the data will be stored at the leaves and the internal nodes will have discriminating.
values. This is the main uh, use of trees as a data structure. Next let us consider binary, binary trees and the way you can search through the traversal, you can, you can say traversal method. Suppose I have a tree like this. have a tree like this where the nodes are denoted as A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, C. There are three methods in which you can traverse the nodes. One is called the pre order traversal, another is called the in order traversal and third is called the post order traversal. In the pre order traversal, process the root R, R of the T, then if the left subtree exists, then process T1 in pre order, and if T2 exists, then process T2 in pre order. T2 is the T1 is the left subtree, and T2 is the right subtree. So, this is the tree you are having with node labels A, B, C, D, D, E, F, G, H and if you want to traverse the tree in the pre order, in what order you will search the root first, then the left sub tree, then the right sub tree. So, let us see how the nodes are traversed in the pre order ma in manner in this tree. So, node A will be visited first, then these four nodes will be visited, then these three nodes and in these four nodes also you should follow the pre order method, the root first, the left subtree and the right subtree. So, B will be visited first, then the left subtree is just D then the right subtree E and G have to be visited and here again you have to follow the pre order traversal method, the root first left subtree and the right subtree, there is no right subtree here. So, E and G. <coughs> Similarly, the right subtree also should be visited in the pre order manner, the root there is no left subtree then the right subtree. So, C no left subtree and the right subtree. In the right subtree again should be visited in the pre order manner, root first, left subtree and the right subtree, it is F and H. So, the nodes will be visited in this order in the pre order traversal. <coughs> Let us see how the nodes will be visited in the in order traversal. In order, in the in order traversal, first the left subtree is visited and that is also visited in the in order manner. If T1 exists, then process T1 in in order, then process the root, then the third one is if T2 exists, then process T2 in in order. So, in the in order traversal, left subtree first, then root right subtree. So, if you want to traverse this particular tree in the in order method, in what order? will the root will the nodes be visited first the left subtree then the root then the right subtree and the left subtree itself should be visited in the in order manner first left subtree then root then right subtree that is d first then b next then these two and these two again should be visited in the in order manner 
left subtree, root, right subtree. So, G and E will be visited in that order. Now, look at the right subtree, this also has to be visited in the in order method that is left subtree, root, right subtree. There is no left subtree, so C will be visited next, then the right subtree. And this right subtree again has to be visited in the in order manner. So, H first, then F, then if there is something in the right subtree, there is no right subtree here. So, it will be H and F. So, the nodes will be visited in this order in the in order traversal method. There is one more method called the post order method. In the post order method, the left subtree will be visited first, then the right subtree, then the root. <coughs> the, so, in the post order method, if T 1 exists, then process T 1 in post order, then if T 2 exists, then process T 2 in post order, third process the root node R of the T. So, take the same example and if you want to traverse using post order traversal, in what order the nodes will be visited? First the left subtree, then the right subtree, then the root. So, A will come at the end. The left subtree itself if you take, first the left subtree, then the right subtree, then the root. So, D, then the right subtree that again will be visited in the post order method. So, G if there is something here, then E, there is nothing here. So, it will be G and E, then B. So, in this subtree, the nodes will be visited in this order D, G, E, B and next the right subtree has to be visited that also has to be done in the post order method. That is for this one, there is no left subtree, right subtree has to be visited first, then the root. So, C will come here and this one, again it has to be visited in the post order method, left subtree, right subtree, root. So, there is no right subtree. So, H F. So, the nodes will be visited in this order. So, for binary trees, you talk about these three methods of traversal in order, pre order and post order. Now, if you have the sequence of nodes visited in an in order method and a pre order method, from these sequences, you can construct the tree. Similarly, if you have the sequences corresponding to in order and post order, you can construct the tree in a unique manner. But if you have the sequence corresponding to pre order and post order, you cannot construct the tree in a unique manner. For example, I have uh, four nodes uh, like this say A, B, C, D. The in order will be, pre order will be, here will be A, B, C, D. In order will be B, A, D, C. From this you can construct the tree in a unique manner. How can you do that? Suppose I do not have this, I do not have this, how can you construct the tree? The pre order A is the first, so A is the root. In the in order A is the root, so whatever is appearing on this side is the left subtree and this on the right subtree. So, B is on the left subtree, there is only one node, so it has to be like this. On the right subtree you have C and D and C and D have to be the right subtree. The first one will be the root of the right subtree. So, C will be here and where will be D? D can be here or here, right, but this tells you that in the in order left subtree first, then root, then right subtree. That means, D has to be the left sun here. So, you can draw like this. 
So, from pre order and in order you can draw the uh, tree in a unique manner, but you cannot do that if you have pre order and post order. For example, if you have something like this A, B, C, D, what is the pre order? The pre order is A, B, C, D, the post order is D C B A. From if you are given this, this the tree can be like this or it can be like this also A B C D. What is the pre order for this A B C D? Post order is D C B A. So, the tree can be this or this. So, from these two sequences you cannot construct the tree uniquely. Whereas, if you are given in order or pre order, in order and pre order or in order and post order, you can construct the tree in a unique manner. And if you look at uh, expressions, arithmetic expressions, the use of it will be very clear. Now, we can see how these are uh, these traversal methods are useful when you look at the trees as arithmetic representing arithmetic expressions. We can also see some of the other concepts about trees like spanning trees, weighted spanning trees etcetera in the next lecture. Thank you.